Wilson and several other top recruits recently released their list of top four to six schools and Utah was in the mix. What does that mean for the program and what shot do they have at landing some of these top recruits? We're talking about it on today's Locked On Utes. You are Locked On Utes, your daily podcast on the Utah Utes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone, and thank you for making Locked On Utes your first listen every single day. We are available on all platforms, including YouTube. My name is JT Wistersill, former intern inside the University of Utah Athletic Department. If this is your first time listening to our show, make sure you guys like and subscribe. We'd love to interact with you guys in the YouTube comments. Also on social media, we'd love to interact with you guys there, too. You can hit us up at Locked On Utes, or my personal handle is at JT Wistersill. On today's show, we'll be discussing Isaac Wilson naming Utah to his top six, also talking about some of the other top recruits and the fact that they landed in, that they decided to name Utah one of their final schools that are in the mix for their talents and what that means for the Utah football program that they're in this position where so many of the top players are naming Utah in in their top six and then we'll close out with a little bit of Utah softball because obviously they had an outstanding weekend and are going to the super regionals not going to my gosh they're hosting the super regionals of course so we'll talk about that at the very end but first like we said got to start with Isaac Wilson Isaac Wilson look I talked about on my show Friday that um I thought Utah would made made a lot of sense for Wilson um, we knew from 24-7 sports and some of the stuff they'd been putting out that Utah was well in the mix for Wilson. I will say I got very I, it was more so a matter of situation and luck. I'm sure some of you guys listened to my show on uh, on Friday. We're like, man, I can't believe JT releases episode. And then boom, Isaac Wilson releases list. It's sometimes you there's a saying out there that it's uh, better to be lucky than good. And uh, that was just a situation of me getting lucky. I'd been wanting to talk about Wilson for a while, but we've just had all this transfer news. It kind of got pushed down the docket a little bit. Finally got a chance to talk about him. And then the the universe kind of ends up just making me look look really smart because like, oh, boom, Isaac Wilson announced this news. As I said, that was totally coincidental. But um, everything I still said kind of stands because I'm a huge fan of Wilson's game. I've been lucky enough to call a few of his games, too. I mean, he's a special talent. We're talking about a guy who is just a junior last year threw for nearly 3,800 yards and also tossed 40 touchdowns. So a really special transcendent player, the top quarterback in the state of Utah. And it's great for this Utah football team that they landed in his top six overall. And they weren't the only team either. As Look, as, and on Friday show, we talked about the schools that 24-7 kind of had as the ones that were interested in warm and in the mix. They, they were pretty much dead on with all the schools that were on there. There was no real surprises for Wilson. So Wilson released his top six. It's UCLA, Arizona State, BYU, Oklahoma State, Arizona, and of course Utah. So you get the two Ut- two schools residing in Utah, a California school, the two Arizona schools, and then the as far east as we'll go is Oklahoma State. So I, I think it's really interesting. I think each of these teams makes some sense for Wilson, but look, just looking at it overall, I feel like Utah is in a great position to land Wilson when you look at all these teams and kind of compare out like how the position that this Utah football team is in versus them. First of all, obviously Utah is the only team on this list that is coming off back to back Pac-12 championships. So, I think that's pretty special. It doesn't need to be stated for itself. The Rose Bowl appearances look great on there, too. This offense is rolling right now. The position they're in, the level they're recruiting at is better than ever. And, of course, they're putting players in the NFL. So, right away, Utah makes a lot of sense and is very appealing. Um, let's While we go down each of these schools and kind of talk about what Utah could bring versus what they offer, I think you look at a place like BYU. Look, BYU, he could go over following his brother's footsteps. But I'm going to be honest, and I know a lot of you guys who are probably listening to this want me to just bury BYU right here as uh, so many of the BYU fans who come and join us in the comments love to do to Utah. Look, I think BYU, it's going to take him some time in the Big 12. You don't really change conferences and dominate right away. And look, maybe I think that USC can be competitive in the Big Ten when they make that switch right away. It's a little different for BYU. Look, they didn't, they start off the year pretty strong, but obviously, but then things kind of came crashing back down to earth a little bit. And I think it's just a difficult transition. We saw it's one the Utah. It took a while to, for Utah to get to the point where they're winning Pac-12 championships. And they made the game, yeah, back in 2019 and a few other times too, but couldn't really break through. It's going to take time for BYU. So does would Wilson rather join that? Would he rather go to the other school close to home and uh, be a competitor for the Pac-12 team right away? I, I just got to believe it's Utah there. Um, as for the other ones, let's go with the Arizona schools. Arizona, Arizona State. Arizona State, I think, is interesting just because they just got Kenny Dillingham there, but then Jaden Rashada's there, so... Rashad is really good early on. He could be the quarterback there for the next two to three years. 
overall. So I think that one's an interesting one versus Utah. Look, I really like Brandon Rose. I really like Nate Johnson. We know this is Cam Rising last year. And I think that depending on how many games Brandon gets to start, depending on how much of that, it'll be interesting. But it's going to be an open competition for that quarterback spot. Kyle Whittingham has always let the best guy take it. That's why Charlie Brewer came in, and it was a battle between him and Cam. Brewer ended up winning it, but then Cam was obviously the best guy for the job. But Cam didn't win the job early on. Charlie Brewer was better than him in camp, obviously. That's the reason they rewarded him with the position. So it's one of those things where Wilson would have a chance to compete at those other schools, but he's really going to have a chance to compete at Utah because some of these other schools, look, Arizona, Jaden Dolores probably going to be leaving, but how good is Arizona going to be this year with all the talent in the Pac-12? I have a hard time. See, I think they'll get a little bit better again, maybe increase the win total by a game or two, but it's just tough. The conference is really good right now. So I just think for both Arizona schools, yeah, maybe you'll have a chance to play early. And once again, that's a maybe, but neither one of those are you really have an opportunity to win a Pac-12 championship, which is what Utah provides. So as for the other two schools I haven't brought up yet, UCLA and Oklahoma State, I think those make a lot of sense. UCLA, though, Dante Moore coming in, five-star quarterback, if he's as good as he is supposed to be and is hyped, he could be a three-year starter there, just like Caleb Williams has been a three-year starter with with Lincoln Riley now. So that's where I'm kind of like, do, do you really want to go there? And especially if Dante Moore really excels in his first season with the Bruins, I just don't see a path there to play early on. He could see it differently, but it's just hard to see. And then the last one's Oklahoma State. And I think Oklahoma State could make some sense, but – once again, Oklahoma State, look, their team, look, they've flirted with being a top 10 team and they are at different points in college football season, but they always have that bad game, that fall off game. And um, they just, they haven't won a big 12 championship game in recent memory, obviously. So that's where Utah to me is more appealing there because Utah is on top of the Pac-12 right now, the recruiting class and everything they're bringing in. And Mike Gundy's done a good job there and has done a good job with some quarterbacks there too. I think of Spencer Sanders most recently, who's now at um, Ole Miss, but even he wasn't like, obviously Cam Rising has been better than him. So that's where I'm kind of like, once again, I just feel like Utah is the best option when you compare these schools. I really think Utah gives them the chance to play early. They give them the chance to win too. And also going to give them an opportunity to develop a skill set to put himself in position to go to the NFL. I feel like too, when you're surrounded by that much talent and look, Utah doesn't have the top of the creme de la creme or whatever the thing is. I totally butcher that. Um, but the top of the top receivers, right? But they do have some of the best tight ends in the country, um, unless you're pro football focused, for those of you who watch my show on Friday. But you have some of the best tight ends always. You're still going to have dynamic receivers and guys who are experienced. And especially just because this Utah football team continues to win, I got to believe they're going to continue to land productive transfer receivers because these are guys who, yes, they want to improve their stock and their numbers, but they also want to go to a place where they can help a team out and win. In. And I got to believe that Utah is only going to continue to bring in more receiver talent. And I think Mikey Matthews is a guy who could have a big freshman year, could be appealing for Wilson to want to come in and play with him. And once again, I just think when you look at the opportunity to be a three-year starter, which he will have the chance to compete for when he comes to Utah. And yes, I heard those of you on my show on Friday who's like Kyle Whittingham doesn't usually roll with true freshmen, I, or maybe he has never actually, I should double check that, but just in general, like all I'm saying is Wilson's going to have a chance to compete for the job. And if he's the best guy, He's going to get the job. So I just think that's something to keep in mind as a uh, Wilson might have a chance to work with Andy Ludwig, but it's going to be interesting to see. It's great that Utah is in the top six. And as I said, I think whether you look at the position this Utah football program is in right now, it is in a better position than these other programs. And because of that, I think they arguably have the best shot to land Wilson, which sounds crazy a little bit just because his brother did go to BYU, but I really believe it. So it's going to be interesting to monitor the recruiting of Isaac Wilson. As it continues to go on, a lot of these guys like to make their decision in the summer to kind of take away from the distraction of during the season. And then you get some guys who wait till after the season, like we saw with Spencer Fano, Smith Snowden last year, too. So just going to be something that's interesting to track and monitor, just like it's going to be interesting to track and monitor what these other top recruits end up deciding to do. We're going to talk about what it means that Utah football has put themselves in a position where you have top recruits at these positions that are putting Utah in their top six in a moment. But first, I want to talk to you guys about our friends at Bill Barr. Looking for a delicious snack, but don't want all the sugar and calories? Then you need the best tasting protein bar ever. Built. You got to try this. If you're like me and you want to make healthier snack choices, but you don't want to compromise on taste, I've got just the thing for you. Built Bars and Built Puffs. Built Bars are healthy and they taste amazing. Seriously, they taste so amazing you won't think they're good for you, but you got to try this. What makes Built Bars so good? Well, for starters, they're all covered in 100% real dark chocolate. That's right, real chocolate. And they come in unbelievably great flavors like churro, peanut butter brownie, and cookies and cream. I'm not sure I'll 
Girl Built does it, but these bars taste like a candy bar while maintaining amazing macros. And what's even better is they are healthy. Only 130 calories and 4 grams of sugar with a whopping 17 grams of protein. And now you don't need to wait to get a box. Yes, you can still head over to Built.com, but you can also head over to your local Smith's or Sam's Club and pick up your box of Built Bars today. So come discover all the great flavors like a churro, peanut butter, brownie, and cookies and cream at Built.com or in your local Smith's or Sam's Club. Built, you got to try this. All righty, coming back in, we'll talk about, like as I mentioned, there are, were multiple recruits who named Utah in their top four to six. You know, Friday is just one of those, um, was the day where it was really cool to see all these top players and prospects announce that, hey, Utah is one of the major schools we're considering. You got offensive ta- a four-star offensive tackle like Manasseh ITT, and I apologize if I mispronounce his name, announcing that, Chris Johnson, another guy, Anthony Himes, another prominent player and we're going to break down those guys games specifically later on this week in the show but i think it's just a cool opportunity to sit back and reflect for a second like man you got these top players and prospects that are considering utah which i just think is really cool and shows you the position that this school and program is in and yes utah has done a couple of this the last few years but how often has utah missed out on the four stars and it felt like those back-to-back back 12 championships really change that i mean getting guys like clark phillips too obviously helps um of course landon lander barton was huge spencer fano smith snowden cj blocker all those four stars that gave utah their top 25 class that was it was so great to see and this speaks to the position that once again that this program is in which is a very strong one so why is utah in this position where they are in the top four to six of all these players schools well i think when you look at it it's something we've talked about a few times on the show i think the very first thing i'll point to is it's a place where they have an opportunity to play right away. And it's all three of the things that work together, I'm going to say. It's play right away, it's an opportunity to win, and go to a place where you feel like you can get your skills maximized and develop in a place to put yourself in position to be drafted to the NFL. Look, all these guys, their probably number one priority in picking a school is putting them... I shouldn't say all these guys because I don't know these guys personally, but I still got to believe... All these guys have a goal and a dream, and it's probably their top goal and dream is to go and play in the NFL. Now, I don't doubt that their goal is to also be successful and win in college, but I do think a lot of them, their top goal is to set themselves up for success at the next level. And because of what we've seen with Utah football, Dalton Kincaid, Devin Lloyd, just a few of the guys, and even we saw Brain Daniels, Clark Phillips, Diabate may have gone undrafted, but just another guy where Utah puts you in a position where You can get developed and grow into a guy who's being looked at and considered by NFL teams. When you look at Clark Phillips, he came in with a plan to work hard for three years and then go on to the next level. And that's exactly what he did. He had a plan. He came in and he executed it to a T and it worked out great for him. And you could look, it it was a bummer. He fell to the fourth round, but that was more height concerns and stuff that look, I think in redrafts, he's going to go a lot higher. And hopefully Clark is one of those guys who rewrites the narrative a little bit there. So For some of these corners who are a little shorter in the future, if they're just good football players, they're going to be able to go high in the draft because I do think, as I said, Clark will end up being a redraft. But a Braden Daniels, a Dalton Kincaid, a Devin Lloyd, even a Brant Keithy, who's a guy who I still think is going to get an NFL opportunity. These weren't guys who came in and you're like, oh, yeah, for sure, NFL player right there. Like, circle that guy. Like, those guys were two and three stars. Like, no one thought they were going to be the players and become who they were going to come. So what does Utah provide? An opportunity for you to come in and develop your skill set. And they also allow you to develop and win. These guys want to win. They're ultra competitive every time they step out on the field. That's why all that stuff gets made of guys sitting out of bowl games and stuff like that. And I I do think some some of those situations, this guy's just making a business decision because if you do get hurt in that kind of a game, it's going to hurt your draft stock. So I understand why those players make those decisions because you could look miss out on major money. But look at how those guys dominate during the regular season. Look how hard they play each and every snap. That's where these guys are really competitive and they want that opportunity to win. Utah, once again, Back to back Pac 12 championships. I believe the stat I had a couple weeks back on my show was they have had, they've won nine or more games in eight of their last seven seasons, excluding the COVID year. Like that's, that's incredible stuff. And it speaks to the position. Once again, Kyle Whittingham has his program in. They're absolutely rolling right now. They're operating at a recruiting level that's an all time high. They're performing. They're showing up in the big games, right? In the Pac 12 championships. That was something that Utah wasn't able to do in recent memory, right? And we all remember 2019, you know, there's kind of the on pour with Justin Herbert and everything that kind of ended up happening there. And it was not fun to watch, obviously, but um, just one of those things where the last couple of years they've been able to break through. And that's kind of been the case now where this Utah football team goes in the games against these powerhouses like Oregon, USC, that have dominated the Pac-12 landscape for, well, obviously USC has been a little down, but Oregon has been like kind of the powerhouse of the Pac-12 for the last decade, them, Stanford in there too, 
and Utah is able to steamroll them in the championship game. Like this is really cool and exciting to see. And I think the other thing too, is you get an opportunity to win, as I mentioned, and you get the opportunity to grow and develop. You also get the opportunity to play really early on, especially if you are a four or five star that you can look at it. Like I have this high ceiling and this potential get developed. I can win. And I have a chance to play earlier. That's one of the big reasons Clark ended up coming to Utah and ended up starting right away too. And given the Utes great production inside and out, I mean, in the slot or on the outside, because we know Utah used him all over the place because he was such a dominant defensive back. So that's where I really think it's a nice opportunity for these guys to come in. Um, look, a guy like ITT, as we'll talk about later on the week, he's a guy who hasn't played a ton of football, so he's still a raw. So, and it's hard to play on the offensive line early, so he might have to develop a little bit. But a guy like Chris Johnson, the second, a, a four star corner, who's to say he couldn't come in and play alongside a Smith Snowden and a CJ Blocker, especially because if Zamaya Vaughn is a great year, JT Broughton is a guy I don't expect to come back, but Vaughn, especially if he booms, I think there could be a lot of NFL teams really interested in a lengthy athletic corner like him. So that's boom, two years corner spots could be open. If you're Johnson, you can come in and have a chance to play and start right away. And once again, you can win too. So I just think there's so there all those are the main reasons that Utah is at this level right now, where so many of the top players and recruits in the country are going to be looking at and interested in them. Outside of look, obviously Alabama, Ohio State, Georgia, those are the ones who are going to continue to have the top of the top recruiting class. But I think for some of these other four stars, some of the guys in the secondary category like that. They're going to look at Utah and be really appealed and just find that opportunity really exciting that they could have a chance to come in and play right away. So it's going to be interesting to see how the summer plays out and if how many of these guys Utah can land. And as I said, later on, this as the week goes on, we're going to be breaking down each of these guys' games individually. But I think it's nice just to be able to, you know, kind of sit back, put your arms up, kick your feet up, all that, just to look back and be like, man, just revel in and be like, look at all these amazing players based on potential that are naming Utah to their top six. It's a really cool thing. And it speaks to the strong position. This Utah football program is currently in. And speaking of strong Utah programs, we've got to talk about what Utah softball is doing. And we're going to come back and do that in a second. But first I want to talk to you guys about our friends at FanDuel Sportsbook. Make a fast break to FanDuel during the NBA playoffs because right now new customers can get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's $1,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. FanDuel makes it super easy. There's promotions every day. It's a safe and secure app and you can get paid in your winnings instantly. The NBA playoffs have been absolutely wild right now. I mean, Nuggets, Heat, who would have had that as their finals to begin the year? And it seems like it's what we're heading for right now, seeing as both those teams are currently up 3-0. But as for the game tonight, I mean, do you guys think the Lakers can get a game? Is LeBron going to get sw- wept is denver going to be able to close it out or even looking ahead to tuesday's action is miami going to get it done at home are they going to complete the sweep or does boston able to figure some stuff out that's going to be interesting to watch to see how all those play out and you can get it on the action at FanDuel. and there's no better place to bet on all the playoffs than america's number one sports book visit fanduel.com slash locked on again a no sweat first bet up to one thousand dollars that's fanduel.com slash locked on fanduel an official sports betting partner of the nba before we get out of here i wanted to Give a quick shout out to the Utah softball team. I mean, what a weekend. Earned the opportunity to host the regionals and then just took care of business. You look at the game on Friday against Southern Illinois. They won it 11 to 9. Then the two games against Mississippi first Saturday and then Sunday. They won the first game 7 to 1. And then they beat Mississippi 4 to 1. Um, huge shout out to Mariah Lopez, who in that second game I mentioned, she threw her second consecutive complete game, allowing only one run. And Utah is currently ranked the 12th softball team, clinched a spot in the NCAA Super Regionals for the first time since 2017 by downing Ole Miss and once again, really holding their offense in check. And Sunday afternoon on day three of the NCAA Regionals at the Dumkey Family Softball Stadium, that's where Utah was able to do it. And now they put themselves in a position to host those Super Regionals in which San Diego State is going to be coming to Salt Lake. That game scheduled the first one for May 26th, Friday at 8 p.m. It's going to be streamed on ESP or available on ESPNU. And then you'll have a game on Saturday at 3 p.m. Mountain Time. And if it's needed, we'll have a game Sunday as well. So make sure you guys follow that. And then the winner of that's off to the Women's College World Series. So really exciting for this Utah softball team right now that they're in this position. The Utes have now won 40 games for the first time since 2006. Like, wow, once again. And the seventh time in program history, they will host the NCAA Super Regional Series, and that begins Thursday or Friday. This will be the first time Utah has ever hosted a Super Regional, and it's the squad's third trip to the stage overall in their history. So just incredible stuff. And as we mentioned, this is team 15 and 9, 40 and 13. And look, you see a team's true colors when postseason time rolls around. I look over and I see UCLA, right? The second ranked team overall, what they've accomplished in the past, and they're already out of the tournament. So you just some of these teams we've seen made for postseason play. That's like 
Utah women's basketball too. And look what coach Hogan or squad have done. As I mentioned, this is a team that look, they lost some big games last year. They just missed out on postseason play. They obviously came back motivated. It's so many of the same players too, from those teams in the past that find themselves with this opportunity to advance to the super regionals. So just impressive stuff by this Utah softball team overall. When you talk about like Carly Davidson, who homered and drove in the, and drove in five runs um, overall in the week, we look at, Bellardi, Jimenez, Jaquez, Dayton, as I mentioned too, just so many, Bonstrom, so many different players able to contribute to this squad and help them reach this stage and reach this position. And it's really exciting that they're going to have the opportunity to advance to the softball World Series. I mean, that's incredible. And I think if you had told me going into the year, just based on the Utah softball I saw last season, when I called some of those games, I, I would have said I'd be surprised. I just, I didn't see it in the, in the group from last year. So I think it's incredible that they're in this position. Credit to Coach Hogue and her staff. Look, they obviously weren't picked to be top 12, like our top 15 going into the season. So they were counted out by a lot of people and they proved the doubters wrong. And that's what's so fun about Utah sports right now, right? We had Michelle Bodkin of KSL Sports on last week's show talking about it, how this Utah team Team continues to prove the doubters wrong in a variety of sports, whether it's football, women's basketball, um, I'm, I'm gymnastics. I guess, I mean, a lot of people still have a top five team, but you still, it's hard to get there and do it. Right. So once again, just so amazing that Utah has so many sports rolling right now, and especially softball. And it's going to be a lot of fun to see if they can get it done on Friday and advance to the college world series for softball. So I'm really excited to check all that out and see how it plays out too. But once again, hats off to Amy Hogan, her squad, 40 wins on the season, took care of business in the super regionals, getting it done against Southern Illinois in the first game and then taking care of Ole Miss in the second two games in which they outscored the Rebels overall by a score of 11-2. to Woo! Good stuff from Utah softball. So that's going to do it for today's edition of Locked On Utes. But as a reminder, make sure you guys come back tomorrow as we're going to be talking about, we're going to talk about my man, Manasseh Aititi. And once again, I apologize for mispronouncing his name. We're going to be breaking down his game, what he would bring to the school the squad and we're reacting to some other news relating to all things Utah football and Utah athletics. That's going to be on tomorrow's Locked On Eats.